You're listening to Search the Scriptures Daily, a program in which we encourage everyone who desires to know God's truth to look to God's Word for all that is essential for salvation and living one's life in a way that is pleasing to Him. We've been discussing the topic of psychology in the church for a number of weeks now, and the question has been posed, why spend so much time on this subject? Well, for starters, nothing, and we've been saying this week after week, Dave, nothing has so undermined the belief in the sufficiency of the Scriptures as has the introduction of and dependency upon psychological counseling and concepts, their concepts that have entered into the church. Sermons today dealing with issues of life are too often supported by so-called experts in the world. Famous psychiatrists and psychologists are usually the ones quoted, supposedly adding credibility and their own solutions, of course. So psychological concepts have been transformed into doctrines accepted by much of the church, such as the humanistic teaching of self-love, self-esteem. And today, Dave, it's, it's amazing, uh, really uh, tragic, I think. There are more than 50,000 members of the American Association of Christian Counselors, an organization committed to the integration of psychology and Christianity. Dave, as you know, I could go on with example after example, but... Uh, well, let me give you a few well, more. Well, I, I just don't think we're belaboring it. That's my yeah, point. Right, here. right. I was just reading... Um, well, I'm reading a lot of books. In fact, it's got your name in the front, Tom. How did I get it? I don't know. But it's by uh, John D. Carter. Was his name John? Oh, from... Uh, and and uh, Naramore, Bruce Naramore. Bruce Naramore. Well, well it's, from by, it's by Naramore and Carter mm-hmm. from Rosemead. And uh, they begin the book by extolling the virtues and and rejoicing in the fact, and I mean, I wish I had it in front of me right now to read it. Uh, they talk about uh, that it's the biggest section in the, in the Christian bookstores, that mm-hmm. the, that the pub, Christian publishers have really gone after this, that this is the, these are their most popular books. The, the authorities in the church now, the speakers at uh, conferences, in fact, they even said that uh, psych- psychologists and psychological counseling and, and basing things upon psychology have replaced the gospel meeting, have replaced the um, exegesis of the scripture. And, uh, I mean, they went on and on uh, about the impact that psychology has had in the church. And they think it's a good thing. They think it's a good thing. Unbelievable. And, uh, Tom, of course, the impact on the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, when you consider that the psychologists, the psychiatrists, uh, they have wanted to really be the rulers of society because they're the only ones who have the answer to how people can keep on an even keel emotionally and they can get the aggressions out of the world rulers if they only could give counseling to these uh, leaders and give them the drugs that would calm them down and so forth. Dave, in the 70s, I just read this the other day, going through past articles that we've been putting together for you know the book that we're working on. Um, 1970s, Psychology Today there was a recommendation, uh, more than a suggestion, I'll say, that parents uh, undergo psychological testing to decide whether they should be allowed to have children or not. Right. Yeah. Well, Tom, so that's where we are. Psychology has become the expert on human behavior, the ones who are going to decide whether you are sane or insane, uh, whether you uh, need drugs or psychological counseling, they want to put their finger in every pie, mm-hmm. in every part of society. And But, Tom, we're talking about it in the church. Yeah. Okay. Now, how long has this great wisdom been around? First of all, it's not a science. Uh, and you still read that in books by Christian psychologists. 
the scientific way to approach the soul. We've gone over that in the past. If you could make a science out of human behavior, you have just destroyed man as God made him because you cannot have a science when the subject of your experiment is hopping about capriciously with a free will and you don't know what he's going to do next. Okay, Tom. Or, or can you have a science of mind, Dave? Not not the brain, <laughs> right. but the mind, a non-physical entity. Right. I was uh, just refreshing myself on B.F. Skinner again. And, um, well, his favorite experimental animal, creature, I guess, was a bird, a pigeon. Mm -hmm. uh, but he liked rats also. And they, um, he um, designed what is still known as the Skinner box. It was a cage for the, to keep them in, and he had various... You know, Tom, he even studied... You know, this is a Harvard University professor, and he's spent so long, many years, studying the behavior of pigeons because he was sure that he could show how superstitions arose in human beings uh, and uh, that we would that the psychologists would use rats little creatures you know like this have no relationship to mankind they're trying to study man and that brings us to the, another point Tom the brain uh, you know Freud had a medical model he was a mm -hmm. medical man everything was well Skinner Every, they, they don't believe in the soul. They don't believe in the spirit. They don't believe in God. So they're trying to find out how stimuli in the world around us program us or condition us to make these conditioned responses, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they would call it. And uh, this gets back to Darwinism. Uh, we are not related to animals. Tom, I was just mentioning to some friends that we had for dinner the uh, day before yesterday that um, they probably didn't know. The DNA in a garden slug is exactly like yours. Uh, really? Dave, <laughs> that's not going to do anything for my self-esteem. No, no, that's right. The DNA, in fact, in, a plant, in all things, all living things have the same uh, language, the same alphabet, the same letters, uh, plants... Animals, you name it, uh, insects, spiders, microbes, the DNA is the same. Now, I would suggest that— That sounds like a case for evolution here. What's, what's going on? Well, Tom, I would suggest that the fact that my DNA or human DNA is related to uh, plants is no more proof— that we're descended from plants. I've never heard that one yet. Mm -hmm. We're descended from plants. Then the similarity in DNA with animals proves we've descended from animals. Now, in fact, well, I don't want, I shouldn't get into this, but it's, it's related to yeah, psychology. No, keep going. Uh, DNA will not allow evolution. In Genesis chapter 1, God said, they will bring forth after their kind. DNA defines the kind. And now you can, you know, we got to have big dogs, little dogs, fat dogs, hairless dogs, and, and long-haired dogs. You can have all kinds of variety. It is in the genes. It's just the combinations of the genes, okay? Mm -hmm. Or you could have some mistakes in copying. There are copying errors. About one in a million, I think, is a copying error. But you're not going to make, you're not going to, get over this barrier uh, to make uh, a new species because it's defined in the DNA. The species is defined in the DNA. And in order to, uh, and that is information. This is an incredibly complex instruction manual, how to build. For more information about the Berean call, call us toll free at our order number or visit our website 